Okay, this is super spare of the moment. Um, but I just thank you so much for reading my comments on my fifth anniversary um, podcast. And um, so, so many of you have said that you love seeing the crochet animals that I make. And so I thought I might just, um, I didn't really put together any footage of me making them, but I'm about to assemble this one for my beautiful friend, Grace. So I thought I'll try and record some of what I'm doing and then you can kind of see the process. And then hopefully it won't intimidate people to um, give it a go, but it also very well may, and I apologize. Um, so anyway, this is, I'm using the Edwards Menagerie Dogs book. It was gifted to me by my lovely friend, Cara. So I'm recovering from COVID, so I'm a little bit snotty still. Um, so the one I made this recent time is called Eleanor the Labrador. I spoke about it on my episode number 62 podcast. Um, and I really, I love this book. So if you are thinking about it, I highly recommend you buy one of the Ed's animal books. Um, this one is dogs and you can see ooh, the different types of dogs here. Um, but the books are great because if I just go through the contents page with you, it shows you, um, I'll just read I'm a bit like a primary school teacher. I teach high school usually, but sometimes I read my kids a picture book. All right, so we have the introduction, how to use the book, what you need about yarn, about the toft yarn, yarn choices and sizing. Then it tells you all the patterns. Um, and I mentioned it um, in the podcast, but I'll go over it again. There are three types of patterns usually. There's like beginner, intermediate, advanced. In this book, there is beginner and advanced. Um, and basically a beginner pattern means it's just all one color. And then an advanced pattern would be one like these ones, possibly even this just because of the facial hair. I guess you call it fur. Um, if it has more than one color, typically it's called an advanced animal or it's slightly more complex. So the last toy I made was the giraffe for my nephew, um, Caitlin the giraffe. And I think that was classed as advanced because it had three colors. Um, so the book, does that. Um, and then it also has a page on technical, so basic skills, the stitches, stuffing and sewing, order of sewing, ears, face details, tails, and um, how to make your own dog if you wanted to. Um, the Ed's Menagerie book that I have um, has most of the same stuff, um, but it, it's not just about, it's all different types of animals. Um, so it's not um, gonna be specific. So, um, you will need things you want is yarn choices, quantities, um, stuffing material, um, black contrast yarn for sewing on eyes and noses, which I don't actually have. So tomorrow I'm going to have to head to the craft store to get some of that. A wool needle for sewing up, which I've got here in my Doxon Studios uh, pouch um, and scissors. And I've also got some scissors and these ones I got actually from um, Lisa, who is, do you see, um, a Lily Pilly, I think, stitches or something on Insta, on Etsy. Um, so, um, the dogs in this book have been made using a palette of 12 natural colours. I usually use Morrison Sons Estate, um, and I just started using that yarn ages ago. Um, I would recommend if you're in Australia and you are going to use this yarn, I personally wish I had more of um, the 14 ply. Um, it makes a bigger animal. Um, like this is my body here. Um, I wish I had sewn this together when I did it because I've left the markers in to help me. Oh, I need to stuff it more. But this toy is not going to be very big. But if you see... Um, my elephant that I made, the first one ever that I made, I think was the elephant. I want to say I used 14 ply and a, a bigger hook. Um, it used more yarn, but I feel like it's a more versatile toy. Um, and then when I made Emma Bunny, I think I maybe used the same size. So I've got some 10 ply left in my stash, but from now on, I think that I'm exclusively going to use a 14 ply yarn or a bulky yarn just because I like the bigger size. So if we have a look here, small, medium, large, and we've got um, so DK, Aaron, and then Giant. So mine technically is probably the Aaron size, and I like a giant animal. Um, the other thing I tell my friends 
oh not the first one I didn't make the first one I made was was the polar bear for for little Ted um and then I made the hippo for El so I made the polar bear for Ted then next came um the elephant for Isaac and then I made the hippo for Elkie and then I made the bunny for um Evie and then I made the giraffe for my nephew um whose parents aren't putting him online so I just call him my nephew um and then this one here um which is for baby C who will hopefully be born anytime from today okay so I digress um, all right, so when we talk about animals, they come in a couple of different forms. So we have the standard form, which is like the base of the most of the bodies. And I don't, it's obviously a paid for book, so I don't want to go into it too much. But literally, that's how much detail it goes into and it shows you. So um, then I chose Eleanor and all the patterns I needed was on this page. And then I go to the back. And because I don't crochet much anymore, I completely forget what I'm doing. But I look at the pattern again and it shows me. So these books are so fabulous because um, it tells you about using a stitch marker. It gives you the abbreviations. I'm going to show you this anyway. So basic skills. Um, that's probably something I don't do often enough. And I every time I regret it, I was a bit better at it this time, but not fabulous. Um, showing you the inside and the outside of the... Um, working yarn which can be difficult and then also showing you how to count the stitches because with crochet if it's not something you do regularly you can forget also has the stitches with photographs to show you exactly um, what you're doing and then we have more stuff about the advanced stitches so like how to change the colors the different loops how to make things like the tails like this tail wasn't super um, I, oh, oh good. I thought I, um, had stuffed this up cause I hadn't stuffed it yet. I needed to stuff it and I thought I'd sewn the end off, but I haven't. So this is the little tail for this doggy here. Um, obviously I will put it on. I think it looks a little bit weird, but that could be a me thing, not the pattern. Most likely a me thing. Um, yeah, so it tells you all about to do it. And then this is what I'm up to today, which is stuffing and sewing. So that tells you about stuffing the body. So all bodies are lightly stuffed before you sew them up. And then you sew the head on um, about stuffing the paws. So um, the legs are supposed to be floppy so that the animals sit. But this little end bit here has a little bit of stuffing in. So when I make them, um, I stuff it before I just slip stitch the top closed. I think she does like tell you to whip stitch it closed, but I just do a slip stitch and that seems to have worked for me um, in the past. So I have my four little legs, one, two, three, and four. One of them does look a little, this one does look bigger, um, but that's user error, obviously. Um, so four legs, I have two floppy ears, um, that go on the back of the head like this. Um, and then a body. And then the tail like I showed you. So, I told you the order of sewings. This is, I got this out anyway before I started recording because I wanted to um, have a little look and figure out how oh, my tail does look okay. So, tells you, sew the head onto the body with two stitches between the top of the body and under the head. Um, and then the other thing that I usually do is Kerry does have videos, the, the author has videos on the Toft UK YouTube channel. So I quite often will have that up with and my iPad just to watch as I do it. So, um, so do it on with two stitches under the head and you start at the back and you work forward. And then once you've lined it up with the tummy over so around the stitches into a small circle to secure. Then you show, sew the front legs to the top of the body, which is underneath the head. And then sew the back legs onto the bottom. And what you wanna do here is how you make the bear or the animal sit up is the positioning of the legs on the bottom. And then this one here has probably more details, I think, than the other book. Oh, here it is here. That's the back. That's what I need to be looking at when I put my um, Eleanor together. 
and then um, also tells you all about the face details as well. So I think I probably prefer this book in terms of instructions than Ed's Menagerie. Um, and then, yeah. So my plan tonight, just for the cats, is to put this um, together and then I will sew the nose on and stuff tomorrow once I've gone and got um, the pattern. But you can, yeah, I honestly, if you, a few people have said to me that they are interested in doing it and they just need to like make the jump. Um, I would say it's really supportive. Like if you don't crochet, then um, it, it can be tricky. Uh, like I said, I have to re-familiarize myself every time with the stitches, but it's totally doable. I really recommend these patterns. The only other stuffies that I've made have been a knitted, two knitted ones. One I stuffed up completely, that was my error. Um, and another one was the Georgia the Hippo or Georgina the Hippo, which is a Lolo did it pattern. Um, was my first actual stuffed animal, I think, and it was n completely knitted and I didn't enjoy it. I, or maybe it wasn't my first. I don't know, but I, I prefer to crochet. Um, I like the look of them and it's fun. The other thing, hot tip for you, if you do decide, um, she does mention it, but sometimes it's easy to not check the pattern. Oh, there's my head. Yeah, so what I'm about to do today is um, finish stuffing them and then I will attach the head like this can you see I will show you more afterwards um but I put the markers on to show me but they have the, if when you stuff them too much they need stuffing to sit up um but you don't want them to be too stuffed and the other thing is that these animals do have this distinct tummy which helps them to sit so I will be like whip stitching this on and then I will add the ears and they go on kind of like at the back of the head so that they come forward. The elephant was really interesting because it obviously had enormous ears. Um, and then different animals are different too. Like if you put them up different breeds would have higher ears. Like if I made a cat, which probably will be the next one actually. Um, down lower. Honestly, the positioning can really change the way that your animal looks. So that is part of the fun of it, I guess. So. Um, what I'm going to do now is do some more stuffing. I've talked you through it um, and then I may just like set my camera up so you can watch me as I put it together. But anyway, I hope this encourages one of you or anybody to um, make an Ed's animal. I wish I had more photos of all of mine. I love the ones I took of Samuel. Um, no, I want to make Samuel, sorry, Samuel the koala. I love the ones of Caitlin the giraffe that I made last year. I just really love all of them. I'd like to make another bunny and I'm going to make a cat. That's like one of my kittens. Um, I keep saying to myself, oh, I'll just make them and have them on the shelf ready to go. But I really love choosing an animal as my friends um, or family are having children and um, making it special with that child in mind. So yeah, thanks for watching.